This is Mitch with 1000 Houses Podcast. I'm here with Ann Sieg today, and we're going to be talking about uh, how to become an Amazon reseller. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what in the heck is a real estate investor show talking about Amazon reselling for? And sometimes people think that because I'm in real estate, and that's what I know to talk about, and that's what a lot of my guests talk about, that that's the end all for this program, and it's not. This podcast is designed to help you find your financial independence. And I don't really care how you do it or where you do it. Or as long as we do it legal, we're not hurting anybody when we do it. And and whether you get me as your coach and you go into real estate or you get Ann and you go in, I don't care. Just find a way to make whatever you're making now at your job so you can quit. And why is that important? because that'll free up 2,600 hours that you get back control of that you used to give control to your boss or your employer. And now we can find out who, you're, who you really are, what you're really meant to do, and what, what your passions are and what you're good at. And I believe that ultimately leads to a, a better life. Am I on the right path, Ann? You're dead on. It's really about, you know, at the end of the day, because I've done real estate with my husband, my son got into it, is we'll call for what it is. We're opportunity seekers. We're looking for an opportunity to create a different outcome that we're currently in. So anyone who's listening, bottom line is they're looking for a different outcome to whatever extent it ranges from A to Z, but e-commerce is but one of many potential opportunities to give you a desired outcome. Yeah. So, you know, I really don't care. Um, how you find your financial freedom. I, I, I just want to help spark some, some interest or some, some ideas for you. You know, there's really no excuse. And, I, you know, every minute of my life that I had a J-O-B, I was burning the candle at both ends after hours and on the weekends trying to get something off the ground so I could get out of that. So I could, and, it, it, and I thought it was about money at first, and it's not really about money. Um, it's tied closely to money, but it's not really when you get down to it about money. It's about freedom. It's about the freedom to do and go and be and decide for yourself what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, for the most part, you know, (laughs) businesses make demands too, you know, so be careful that you don't get in a business or you don't set up a business that that you're a slave to because it's real easy to do that too. We try to set up a businesses that we can operate even above the CEO, you know. Absolutely. A business of businesses. For us and we don't work for the business. You know what I mean? So that's exactly. what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're we'll be talking about Amazon reselling. And um, what I like about certain businesses is that they're global. I mean, I start to, I've started to notice, wow, I'm in real estate investing. I do seller financing. You know, that's not real global. It is. It gets to be pretty niche, and there's some states you can't even do that in, you know, because of laws or regulations, you know, and and uh, and it's it. Anyways, sometimes I think, man, I wish I'd have hung around and looked for a global opportunity, you know, where I could be open to the world. And so, um, this is one of those, you know, when you're an online seller, when you open up online, you're open to the world, and I think that's very interesting, and. What's your opinion on this, Ann? COVID mm-hmm. really brought mm-hmm. to light. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't need to go to the grocery store anymore. We didn't need to go to all these places anymore. We learned to shop online. If you weren't already shopping online, you figured it out, right? Yes. Um, I have to say, so I came online 18 years ago, and I am very grateful I did. It was in part family happenstance because my son was pursuing online marketing independent of me. We were working a lot together while he was in high school, different business things. He tried a lot of stuff, but we both kind of organically went off into the online space, him with his and me with my, and then we joined forces. He was 21 years old at that time. And he became the top affiliate marketer for Walmart uh, Best Western, you know, get response, which is an autoresponder, but all to say he was doing that. I was doing my thing. We joined forces and we were doing real estate at that time too. And we're basically dribbling a lot of different balls to see what would work. Well, we landed in the online bucket. So I have to tell you when COVID came down, which I have a son who lives in China, by the way. So we witnessed stateside 
aghast at what was going on there. And they had just been here in December, the very end, he proposed to his fiance, they go back to China and next thing you know, COVID. Oh man, if we could have just kept them here in the States, but who would have known? And we watched them from afar with all those lockdowns. And I never thought, I just thought that was contained to China. And we're hoping, oh man, they get unlocked and all this. No, then it hit us. So here's what happened. And that was March. And there was a lot of movement in March and our family and such. But when Amazon or when the ruling came down, the shutdown, right? I actually had a son from Minnesota move down to come to Arkansas where he felt safer because it's a little stricter and tighter up there. Anyway, so there was a lot of movement in my family, but we were like in Noah's Ark. Not only my company, we have about 20, 21 people. We've got a team of VAs that work with us too. The company was in Noah's Ark, meaning we were safe, but my sellers, they were exploding in sales in March. And so what happened in the month of March is Amazon brought in a hundred million new prime buyers. A hundred million happened because of the shutdown. And it was so prolific, Amazon actually limited what we could ship in as third-party sellers to five categories, baby, household, pets, the, the bare essentials. Everyone's trying to get the mask and the sanitizer and everyone's freaked out about, you know, going to the store and they're wiping down all the doorknobs and even the food they bring in the house and etc. So they were in Noah's Ark. Essentially, if everyone knows the metaphor there is you get in the ark and you're safe and the flood is coming. Not only were we safe, we exploded in growth. We had to actually teach them merchant fulfilled because we couldn't get in all our products in because they said only five categories because they were deluged. Amazon was they built a thousand, put up a thousand new warehouses in that calendar year. Now, not always the big, huge ones. They've got, they're building trucking fleets and everything now. A thousand new in that single calendar year. So who benefited were the Amazon sellers. They were safe and sound. And here's the other part about it that's so profound is those who had been especially with me longer were like, driving to and from work and uh, sheltering down and doing homeschool our kids, our kids. Our people were already acclimated, those who had come into the program prior to that. But they came pouring in in 2020 because it was like, whoa, this is nuts. And also people thinking, well, if this were to happen again, I want to be in the safe spot. So the global part is, um, I'm going to give too many, I want to give a little case study story to really drive this point home. All right, so one of my students, I used to train online marketing, how to build sales funnels, et cetera. I did that for about seven years, then we transitioned into e-commerce. One of my students from my previous training program shifted into e-commerce and get this, okay, for those who feel like they might be a late bloomer, her name is Dr. Josie Shepard. She started on Amazon when she was 71. Within five years, she had three automated businesses. And I talked to her the other day. Now she's building yet another prep and ship center. She's had three different Amazon sellers, but here's the, here's the global. Her son in Thailand runs the prep and ship center in California. That's global. She yeah. lives up in Oregon and she's opening up a second one now. And prep and ship center. And she's got Amazon businesses. She's now 79. But by five-year sprint, she had multiple automated businesses. I said, where did you learn to do that, Josie? She said, Ian, you taught me that in your previous program. I'm like, well, you're a good student. So all to say, you can have business. I mean, her son is running the company and I, that's brick and mortar. A shipping center is brick and mortar, but he's yeah. managing it. Well, that's the... Um... You know, all kinds of things are possible when you get with people that have done it and you and, and um, understand how things work and stay getting educated. Uh, business just goes to different levels, and, and and there's always another level to go to. I I have learned it doesn't you, you never finish. No, you know, there's always another level. Yeah. If you want, you know, it, if you don't want to sit down, you don't have to. Yeah, if you're the ambitious type, because I'm like Josie, um, you're 79. Yeah, right. But I'm having too much fun, Anne. She's having fun building businesses, rinse and repeat, 
And she hadn't built businesses previously, by the way, just, just to make it clear. And the reason this is such a shortcut is the marketing is all done. It's all built. It's called Amazon. They have the most rapid customer base on the planet. So why would people that go into e-commerce, why would they fail? How would they fail? By diving into the deep end of the pool. And I can talk that through because knowing what the potential pitfalls or point of failures are, are incredibly important. So I'm going to talk that through because when, oh, you mentioned e-commerce and uh, I'm going to get into this because people get very mess, messed up, tripped up about, they don't have a point of context of where they're entering into the skill development level within the, there's a wide swath and realm of e-commerce opportunities. I mean, and it's bewildering and you can get totally lost. You read one guy's sales letter and he totally sells you on Shopify's the way. That's what I got to do. I got to go build a brand. Oh man, I see the wholesale queen. Oh man, I got to be like the wholesale queen. And you've got all these one-stop shop gurus with their specific slice of the pie or expertise on what, what they think others should do, obviously, because that's what they're good at. And they're going to sell that. So your unknowing a person who is evaluating e-commerce does not have a point of reference. Are you in the shallow end of the pool where you're going to have the greatest likelihood of success and the risk mitigated as small as possible? Or are you up on the diving platform 30 feet up, which you have no business doing, but you don't know any better? Because I, I read so-and-so sales letter and the videos and the testimonials, they look so awesome. I think that's the way I'm going to go. Okay. So that's the point of failure. That's number one. And the second is, so then the risk becomes higher when you go into a more advanced method, because here's what's going to happen. You're going to tap out with having too many tasks in front of you that you're going to feel like you're droning because you can't keep up with it. You know, I've got to build, we'll talk Shopify. Oh man, I got to get traffic generation going. I got to be able to learn how to convert it into sale. I've never done that before. Um, and I, mean, I got to make sure I get the right products and my brand. And you don't know a lick about competition. You think you do, but as a newbie, you don't. And so you go into this very risk field filled um, method, which would be Shopify. And, and the failure rate is horrific. They'll showcase the success. And by the way, we've taught all these methods that I'm talking about, but I'm just, I got to get real with people because there ends up being too many casualties. And real estate, there's a whole slew of different specialties. I could be wrong. We only oh, did. Oh, no, you're, you're right. I see it all the time. So you know, there's a parallel. They, they get into too much. They spread themselves too thin. They don't drill down deep enough on the one strategy. They don't even know that the strategies that they're trying to do doesn't really work in California or, or exactly or vice versa. They don't know yep. what they don't know. Um, I was just talking to someone the other day. I mean, you have to get a coach that is going to help you avoid these pitfalls. I, I think about my own career. I didn't get a coach. I learned from the street. There's a huge fallout of, <laughs> of a failure from learning nice. from the street. I, I was lucky enough to make it around the bin just in time, you know, but I almost closed up shop because some bad things were happening to me and they over and over and over again. I mean, every time I thought I had one bad thing, saw another bad thing will happen mm -hmm. and I almost quit. And I was this far from quitting a business that was going to be millions and millions and millions of dollars to me over my career, millions. And, and then I got a coach and he navigated me through and, showed me what I was doing wrong and actually saved me from quitting. I was going to, I hired the coach actually to get me, help me liquidate so I could quit. Well, and he, you know, <laughs> yeah. You wow. Know, so you were on the precipice. Help me get out of this. But you worked with him and he got you actually catapulted. Yeah. I said, I said, look, I got these 25 houses. They're killing me. They're eating my lunch. They're killing me. You know, I just want out. How do I sell them? I can't sell them. I've been trying to sell them. I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't want to file bankruptcy. I don't want to, you know, my credit, my name is good, important to me. How do I get out of this and save my good name? And he fixed me. Yeah. And I've been doing that forever since. Well, so you're hitting on that, that other point of failure is, oh, this is a painful one. I'm just going to piecemeal it together. Okay, I got this thing because I'm 
you know, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah, you and a million others. And 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 then so this guy, he said, and then this, and they're, they're gonna they're gonna piecemeal it together, okay? And some might be able to do that, but I'm trying to make, as Robert Kiyosaki says, intelligence is the ability to make finer distinctions. So the distinction is the power of especially to follow someone where you're in a linear, clear step-by-step -step process that is proven. And even with that, so that's what I call the training model. And I make it really clear with people, I'm not interested in just the training of digital marketing um, niche in the online marketing space, which I've done plenty. I've written books and this and that and the other thing. But where the real excellence is in creating change in people's lives is training with mentorship. And so there's, you know, people who grew up and they decide I'm going to do digital marketing and starting to create courses and they're all over the place. There's thousands and thousands and thousands. I've been here 18 years, thousands of them. How do you make the distinction? Who's the real deal? Who's got roots that have gone down deep and that I can really follow and know I'm actually going to be cultured and mentored with an eye on who you are becoming through the process. I always tell people, you're not going to be the same person. Just, you know, okay. You're not going to be the same person when you go through as an entrepreneur, who you are when you come in and when you evolve to, to be successful are, they're going to be two different people. And so you better be ready for these changes and these shifts that are going to have to happen in here and in your heart. Yeah. You know, that's what I tell people that come on with me. I said, you're not going to recognize yourself in a year. So let's write down the date. And we actually write down and put it in your phone. I want an anniversary reminder and say, I like that. What the question is, how far have I come since this day when I when I when I teamed up with Mitch the first day? How far have I come? That's the question. Yeah. And I said, you're not going to recognize yourself at the end of the year. If you'll just do, you know, most of what I say. You know, like my way is not the only way to do anything. I don't know about in your business, but there's, you know, the main thing I'm trying to do is just get you to quit your job and be able to make a living, hold your head above water and be able to breathe and be okay. Now, do you want to make a run at being rich? Let's talk about that. But yeah. the first thing is get control of your life, get control of that 2,600 hours, get control of, you know, throw away the glass ceilings, break them, break, break them all up. There's no ceilings anymore. It's all up to you. What do you want to do? You want to go 5,000 feet or you want to go 10,000 feet? doesn't matter at that point you can go anywhere you want but you're not going to recognize yourself in a year right you're not no. even going to think the same you know, yeah that's exactly it you're not even going to think the same how you process things your view of the world everything shifts you have a different lens now you evaluate the world in a different way than someone else they're oblivious they don't see what you see but you know you have a fresh pair of eyes so it's letting people, so back to about the points of failure, is diving into the deep end of the pool instead of getting a big zoom out. So I was talking about Shopify would be a deep end, and then it's sequential. So we like to start people where there's the easiest, you know, most dependable, reliable method. And the reason we do that is because you then have what we call more bandwidth, more bandwidth to actually start offsetting your tasks a lot sooner and a more logical progression that, okay, I learned that, now I'm gonna offset that. Because this is something we did after evaluating, this is in our seventh year, so it's two years ago, we looked at our student body and we did exactly that. Where are the points of failure and how could we make things better? And so that sense of overwhelm was, we gotta get them coming in as a CEO from day one, you're gonna be offsetting tasks. You're not gonna be Mrs. Wear Every Hat kind of business owner. And we have people who are literally offsetting within their first month. And we guide them through that because you're going to have to, or you can't scale that you're going to be capped. Now, real estate, you can maybe get to cash flow faster. I'm not sure we, we do a method that's very quick, but you know, it's a bigger, faster move, but you got to put more money into real estate. So it's, no, I, just say, I just say in real estate, you have to, you know, make a couple of strikes and then just roll it back into the business minus whatever you need to eat that month or two months or three months, you know, but everything else you got to put it back in. Now you have a budget. Now you yes. can get a VA. Now you can, you know what I mean? But 
you know, it's always the first deals that are the hardest. And, and, and those are the ones that give you your first big breath of confidence. I mean, I remember the first time I flipped a house and made money. It was like, I, it, it was proof of concept. Yes, exactly. It was, proof of concept. it was a proof that I could do the concept, that yes. me personally could do it. Right. That I did it, even though I didn't make that much money at it. It wasn't the point how much money right. I made. The point was, I bought something, I sold it, I made a profit. Okay, I think I can do this. And so that's what the good coach is supposed to do. You're, you know, when they come into you, they would say, you know, show me how to do online marketing. And you already know where the pitfalls are. You already know how to start out where you're not over your skis, so to speak, you know, yeah. not too far over your skis. Yeah. And, and I totally agree with the proof of concept. And that's what we tell people. You got to make your first sale. And we try to get them to that first sale as quickly as possible. It can happen within two to three weeks, depending on how fast they run. Uh, Amazon now has a longer uh, setup process because they had to weed out all these crazy uh, fake sellers over China was flooding and diluting the quality of the Amazon marketplace. So they raised the ante. And so it's more like a seven a day, seven to 10 day process. Okay, we'll walk you through that. And then let's hit the ground running because it's one thing to hear stories, right? People can read your story and they're like, yeah, 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 that's you, but hey, what about me? Yeah, what about you? So let's, let's get out the shovel, let's start digging. So it's getting into that proof of concept and it's exactly like you say, so maybe, you'll, maybe you didn't pick the exact right product and it didn't make the bigger profits you were hoping, but you proved it works. It works. Now we dial it in. Yep. That was like the coaching thing for me. Like someone said, so, so what do you expect them to make your first month? I said, I don't care. I just want to see somebody pick up the phone, somebody hand over a credit card, somebody, I just want, I don't care if it's $10 or $40. I want to see it get cashed while I'm out doing what I'm doing. And then if that works, I'll figure out how to 10 exit or whatever. You know what I mean? I'll figure that out. I'll figure it out. I just want to see the first thing happen. So this was what I would be afraid of. If I mean, as if marketing online is not enough, how do you find products to market? I mean, what, I mean, are you out going to flea markets and finding, or you, I mean, you need truckloads of stuff. And then how do you ship it? So. I mean, I don't know yeah. anything about this. Let, let's, let's break that down. So to be clear, um, we call the term is sourcing products to find them. And there are a number of different ways to do that. Each one increasing in complexity, meaning more variables to go wrong as you increase in complexity. Case in point, sourcing from China, your variables just quadrupled easily yeah. because everything under the sun can happen. My son is a source, sourcing agent in China. So trust me, it, it, it gets way, way riskier. So you want to move the spectrum. Where is the quickest, fastest way? And yes, it will lead to a larger volume over time. But what's so key is you want to make sure everything you're doing has the right kind of sales velocity, has the profit margins. In other words, it, it is all about the data and we're going to teach, that's what we do. We teach people the data. So you're smart, making smart investments. The data, I mean, you don't want to start off with it. You don't want to buy something at a price and be a loser right from the beginning. Exactly. Costs, I assume there are costs attached to and expenses that happen along the way. So if yes. you buy something for 10 and think you can sell it for 15, you can't just go out and say, well, I'm going to make $5 because there's got to be some expenses in between. Yes, there's, okay, so we have a product evaluation spreadsheet. When you put in all the data points in this particular spreadsheet, the data points that are most relevant to making a decision, just like when you buy a house, you're, you're gathering up your data and you know, you, okay, the rent, the this, the that, whatever, all your data points. The same is true with e-commerce. So you line up, input all those data points, and then we have it within our formulation. It's going to show you the exact profit, the return on investment, and it's going to light up and the sales velocity. In other words, we want what's called turn rate. Talk about house flipping. This is about flipping products as fast as humanly possible. An incredible turn rate is 30 days, which some of our sellers achieve. They're really dialed into their numbers. So you get a flip in 30 days, more of an average is two months. And here is exactly like real estate. You make your money when you buy because your Amazon gives us the data. You know, we have to input it. And then our evaluation sheet shows that. So if you're making 
poor choices when you can have the data all there. Now that I just wanna make clear is specific to the arbitrage method. When you start getting into wholesale, you're dealing with, but whoa, how do I get on the front page? Because I heard you got to advertise to get on the front page. Yep, you do. How do I know I have the right product? You're going to have to do massive product research to make sure it's as risk-free as possible. Because when you go to wholesale, you're buying bigger volume. Bigger volume means bigger risk. So when you're new, you're going to start small. And you want to know how small I'm talking? To get a proof of concept, we're talking 200 bucks. If you want to spend 50 bucks, it's not a big deal. It's just you're learning it. You get those products. And so there is another expense called the Amazon seller fee. That's in our data spreadsheet. You add in, but hey, I'm using software and I've got some VAs. You add in those data points. So when you put in that product, you're going to know what, including your operations, your operational expenses. Yeah, it looks good. I'm going to make 25% here. If and you, you buy the product. X amount of days, right? And knowing the turn rate, now that has to do with what's called sales velocity on Amazon. So that's going to be, for example, a star rating. A star rating is going to, everyone knows that, I bet you almost everyone listening is a prime buyer right now. I'm just going to say it's over two thirds of American households. So you guys all know when you're, when you're on Amazon and you're, you're all shoppers, you're all addicted. And Mitch, have you ever bought from Amazon? I'm just curious. I'm a prime. <laughs> okay. Of course you're prime. And, and, and your wife probably loves it too. And everyone. Oh, my family. wife is, my wife is triple prime if they have one because they like, have a box there every day. Yes. It, it's, I see it in my neighborhood. It's like, oh yeah. Okay. And did you know 58% of those? That's that third party sellers. 58% of the sales on Amazon. So when people go, oh man, what about the local shops? I'm like, well, it's called the redistribution of wealth. And here's what's happened. And it's a weird thing to accept, but I'm sorry, it's true. So either get on board with where we're at in this time in the century or not. And that is, it shifted in part from local businesses to little mom and pops who are running a multi-million dollar business out of their homes or Amazon. It's a shift. It's a shift. And the advantage of those who work from home using Amazon is, I don't have to do a look of marketing. I don't have to advertise. Amazon's done all the work. So with arbitrage, you're only selling products that are already selling. When you do wholesale, it's a new listing. So the risk goes up. You're going to have to do a launch. You're going to have to do, you know, there's just other things involved. You don't have to launch necessarily wholesale, but definitely private label. Anyways, all to say you want to start where it's easiest and the greatest likelihood of success. And also that makes it more amenable to hiring people to do that work for you. Yes, yes. So explain arbitrage. I mean, when I, I, the only time I've heard the word arbitrage is when people were talking about interest rates. So if you bought money, I mean, if you borrowed at 8% and then you sold at 10%, you had a 2% arbitrage. So arbitrage just means, means markup to me. It is essentially that. So let's see, I wish I had a better project to demonstrate, but so this is Burt's Bees. The gals here will know what Burt's Bees is. And this has got a UPC code on it, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So Amazon has made this easy for us. They have their own seller app that you get on your phone. And you go into a local store and you scan it. And it is literally going to give you the data to go, oh, smokes, this thing has got this much profit. Uh, you know, just by putting in this data. Now, I happen to know this is not profitable on Amazon to buy at a local store, but we are talking literally, we are talking literally, you can source from local stores. In fact, that has the least amount of competition that um, you're mitigating other sellers just by doing that alone. So you scan it, okay, everything, the data is lining up. I think I'll grab 20 of these. I've had it where my husband says, yeah, there's 120 of these. So I look at the data, so buy them all. So like that, hotcakes. So that data is provided to us, but we moved it to doing it online because there's some folks who, they don't want to be going out to the stores. That's fine. You can do it online and the benefit with online, and that means, I'm going to say it, it's like going to a web store, like Walmart. Everyone's heard of Walmart, right? And when there's a lift buying low on Walmart and selling high on Amazon with profit, our members get on average 25 to 31% profit. Okay. But that's when they vet the product properly. Okay. Some of our sellers get up to 50% profit because they know how to do discount stacking. So when someone else is paying 20 bucks for that product, they're maybe able to buy it for seven bucks 
because they know how to discount stack. Okay. So, but as I mentioned these things, you can have people offset these tasks, specifically virtual assistants that you would be hiring from the Philippines. We walk it through this and they're doing all this online vetting for you. Vetting means proving that the product, putting in the numbers, making sure that they're winning numbers. You don't buy it if they're not winning numbers. No one cares in our minds as sellers. We don't care if it's cute. If it's hideous, I, I saw this hideous purse at Walmart. I scan it. I thought this thing, oh, this is the most hideous thing I ever saw. No, it was in, it was selling fast. It was for little girls, apparently. Who cares? It doesn't matter in our mind what we think is cute or it's just complete non-issue. Uh, we sold a bunch of refrigerator um, filters. Super big profits and ugly super, boxing. Super romantic. What what a romantic yeah. business. It's you know? very romantic. Refrigerator filters, you know? But if you make a million dollars moving them from point A to point B, who cares? It gets yeah. pretty romantic after that. It, that's exactly it. The, the romance comes after as you're yeah, making yeah. your sales. But I could so, fall in love. I could fall in love with refrigerator filters if it would, you know. You know, you it's it, well, you fall in love with the numbers. That's what yeah. you fall in love with. And you go, now those are some hot smoking numbers. So <laughs> <laughs> this is some hot smoking numbers right yes, here. Ooh, exactly. baby, I'm going to get me some of those refrigerator filters. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's about, and then you can offset that work. Now this really was what lifted the success rate with our members. We used to recommend getting a VA kind of down the pipeline. Not anymore. Now we recommend a VA virtual assistant. As soon as you are able to evaluate their work, you don't have to be an expert at it, but you darn well better know how to assess their work. In other words, how are those numbers looking? That's how. And so that's what we train people on. So your VAs are working during the night, our day, you wake up, they've evaluated these products. Now from our trainers, we have a suite of trainers. Uh, their numbers are one good virtual assistant is $70,000 in profit per year. A good quality VA. And we have it all broken down, broken down, broken down. And we do this in a workshop where we just, we show it point by point by point by point. So we have hundreds of people who are sourcing and getting VAs to do that piece of the work, which is the most important. You got to have something to sell. That's the most important. But I'm going to talk about shipping and how that gets automated. Okay. These products as an FBA seller, to make that clear, okay, because I'm throwing all the terms. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon. Prime buyers, we love it. We get two free days shipping. It shows up at our door. Done. Sometimes faster. In order for a product to become FBA qualified, it has to be in an Amazon warehouse because Amazon is making the promise behind their brand name, it's gonna be there in two days. You know, So that's their promise. When it's merchant fulfilled, when you accidentally buy one of those and it's like seven days, 10 days later, you're like, what? I didn't even notice that it wasn't prime. You know, I'm always kicking myself because you know, I made my decision, I want it here in two days. So anyways, we gotta get those products into the warehouse. Well, how does that get automated? There's, there's two options. There's three. At first, you do it. That's one. The second is you train someone locally to do it. And the third is, I don't want to have anything to do with this. So what do you do? There's a new cottage industry in town. Okay. There's a lot of new cottage. 39-year-old ladies doing it, right? Well, this is the prep and ship center people that are now building. They have a business that supports a third-party seller who's like, I don't want products in my house. No, 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 no. Did that before with network marketing. I'm not going to do that. So what they do is when they place that order online, because they're ordering from online stores, it gets shipped to the prep and ship center. We'll ship it out to you. And yes, there's a cost to that. But I like to look at life as my time is money. And I'm going to now move up to work more on the business instead of in it because that's where you need to be as a CEO. You start at the grunt level and you wanna work your way up so that you're growing the business and not doing the daily minutia, which would be finding products and doing the shipping. You might start with them and our members vary. Some I love and I'm you can't, I love doing the shipping, I'm fine. 
other people, oh, I went with the prep and ship center right away. And I do not want to be doing that, want it out of my house. So what we're interested in is what makes it scalable and what makes it hands off so that people can actualize and have a, um, you know, the lifestyle, the lifestyle piece is they sure they want the income. Most everyone, everyone is listening right now. That's top of the list. We can agree, Mitch. They, they want yeah. the income because yeah. most people are looking to transition. There are some people right now are real estate investors because they join their program and I've talked to them. Just talked to a gal yesterday. Um, but this is where you can have people offset that and do that work for you so that you can be that CEO of your business and, and get that dream lifestyle. So you get both financial and time freedom. Oh, that's like... Um, people in the real estate business going and painting their own house and 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 doing their own carpentry work and everything. Like, no, no, you're making the money finding the house. That other stuff's fifteen dollar an hour job. You know, if you find if you're good at finding houses, you should be worth you know a thousand dollars an hour. So why in the world would you paint a house? Nothing against painters. I'm not saying that. It's just right. you can't work below your pay grade. And so you. You got to figure out what that is first and you got to figure out how to have a higher pay grade so you don't have to do all this other stuff figure out what you're good at i i'm going to guess if you're good at sourcing winning products in this business then you'd probably never have to put tape on a box ever again in your life you're golden you're golden at that point because that is the number one the shipping is incidental you deal with it whether you're doing it you hire someone to do it local or you know but what builds the house truly is being darn good at sourcing. One of our trainers has 10 virtual assistants and has developed multiple companies by having a team. So it allows her to branch out. So it's really, um, when you talked about the global at the beginning is, the other thing I like to tell people is, this is, this is like the portal into a completely different world of opportunity that most people don't realize just how big this e-commerce space is and the long-term potential. I mean, real estate too, that's never going to go away. People have to live in a house, right? And with yeah, e-commerce. I say, it sounds a little less intimidating than real estate. Although, I mean, there's methods to buy real estate with none of your own money and you partner with people or get people, you know, there's a way just like, I'll say it, you know, if you think it takes money to make money, then you're going to be broke for a long time. If you're broke right now, you're going to, you can't look at it like that. If you think it takes money to make money, then you're just in a losing, you, you've set yourself up in a losing mindset. That's not ever going to work. What you have to do is find things that you can take a little bit of money and, and exaggerate it big enough that, that you'll get ahead fast enough to get out of where you're at. Exactly. And, 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 and probably one of the hardest things to do from a, if a person has a broke mentality and they start making money, the hardest thing to do is for them to hire someone or to pay for people mm -hmm. to mow their lawn or to box their stuff. When, yes. when really the dumbest thing you could do is mow your own lawn, because if you spent the same two hours in an air conditioned room trying to find a house or trying to source some products, you're going to make Two or three thousand dollars, maybe. I mean, I'm you know, or, or, or ten or twenty thousand dollars. Who knows what the, what, you know, what we're talking about right here? But I'm just saying, it doesn't pay to mow the lawn around my house. Now that cost me some problems at my house because my wife was a worker bee and has always been a worker bee. And she's like, hey, well, when are you going to mow the lawn? I says, I don't mow the lawn anymore. She says, oh, you're too good to mow the lawn. I says, I'm not too good to mow the lawn. I just <laughs> too much money to mow the lawn. You know, yeah. um, it, it it's like you took a while for her to understand that. You know. Can you it's pick like up you're the robbing dry yourself. today? Yeah, it's like, can you pick up the dry cleaning today? It says, look, I'm worth $800 an hour. Can we find someone else to pick up the dry cleaning? Because I am one expensive dry cleaning picker up delivery man. <laughs> no, it, it, the distinction there, and it's so profound, is that your time is more valuable. And when you go to do those tasks, you're actually robbing yourself. You're, you're actually robbing yourself of the the money that you could have made. And my mom's the same way, God bless her, in terms of- well, and a, Depression babies, right? Probably your mom. She's straight depression. from the depression. And so it's kind of like my mom will never have an altered worldview. 
no matter how I, I'm not saying that's true for your wife, but I know for my mom, it, it's like a prophet is not welcome in their own land. My family has no understanding what, what I do. And then my husband's like, you should make it clear. And I said, nah, I don't yeah. need to. Let I don't believe need in their to. own little world. It's, 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 yeah. And I said, it's, that much too, longer. Yeah, you know. it's too um, hard for them to understand. So it's okay. Cool. Let's go here. So this is how you get into this little portal with Ann Sieg and learn about this world. You got, she's got a giveaway called uh, Profit Project Calculator. There's a free workshop coming up. And um, we really, you know, you need to go to the workshop because this, this podcast is really just enough to get your interest up. Okay. So that's really all, all this could do for you is just get your interest up. You're going to have to follow up. So tell us about your... Um, your giveaway and your your workshop, Anne. Yes. Well, the Profit Projection Calculator. So you'll want to register for the web class, the workshop, so that you can get on the list to get the Profit Projection Calculator. We put this software together as a tool because so often people ask, well, if I want to make this amount of money. So how much inventory is it going to cost? Very fair, legitimate question. You know, I want to make this much profit. How much inventory do I need? So we have a training, 20 minute, 21 minute training specifically that walks people through it and how to put things more into your favor as you put the numbers into the calculator. Like, how do you lower your costs? There's strategies to that. Your cost of acquisition, we call it. How do you increase your profit? There's strategies to that. More savvy sellers know what those secrets are that give you a better profit margin, which does what? Hmm, more money to parlay and to pour into more inventory. That's how you outperform other people, so to speak, or get to your end results that much faster. It's making your dollar work further than someone else who is not as savvy and in the know, where they might spend X amount to get this much profit, you would let down and you're getting that much more profit. So that's what you learn in the Profit Projection Calculator. Furthermore, in the workshop, we're gonna go through it live. We're also gonna go through the arbitrage method and we're gonna go through the automation piece. That really is, you know, there's all sorts of different sourcing methods, but just today, literally just today, a gal just joined us. She sells two to 3 million uh, a year right now. And she had followed my information like nine years ago. And here she comes into our, our program saying, 25 to 30%. So if she's doing a million, that's 250,000. If she's doing 2 million, that's $500,000 a year. Am I, am I right? You're right. The okay. problem is she was utilizing a method. I don't get in the weeds here, but we follow Amazon's terms of service very to the T. Because Amazon, sorry, black hat stuff, anything. Don't try and do fancy stuff when it comes to Amazon. They'll catch you by your hiney and they'll do something about it. So she was utilizing a method that is taught out there. And Amazon does not approve of that method. So basically she lost that capability. Now she's going, hey, I, I got to turn my ship around. But most of all, I really want to learn how to automate the business. So I'm here to learn that piece. So she had followed some no-no stuff, sadly. And uh, we make it very clear. We are like, if you want to win on Amazon, you will be like Amazon. You're going to know everything about it so that you're minding the P's and Q's that you need to follow, which is, you know, I, I'll say what it is in case people have looked at e-commerce. It's drop, drop shipping. Not on Amazon, you don't. If you get caught, you're, you're, you're done. Okay. So we don't teach that. We're not going to. Here's why. This is people's focus. They want to build a strong foundation. We're not interested in trying to figure out little cutesy tricks to get around Amazon's rules. We want people to have a long term. Our master trainer is going into his 14th year and he's, he's never had an issue. He follows the rules and guidelines. It's important people know that up front. So I digress a little bit, but back to the workshop is um, you'll learn about the automation. We also go through you know, the, the full scope of what can happen with an Amazon journey. It's pretty magnificent. So we want you to see what that scope, you know, that end game can look like. And we're going to talk about, you know, this is about building a legacy business or you flip these businesses to sell. You can grow a very substantial Amazon business and now you have an asset just like a house. I talked about Dr. Josie earlier. 
they're going for what used to be two to three multiples are going for five to six now. Why? Because it's the here and now. It's not just the future. It's the here and now. Amazon stores are very valuable. So you can know, you can throw your roots down here and do very well for the long term. So that's, we're going to cover a lot of ground in the workshop, plenty of Q&A. Please bring your questions. We love that part of the workshop. Okay, so I want everyone to go to 1000houses.com forward slash Amazon. And everything we've talked about is over there. You can get your free profit project calculator. You can sign up for the workshop. Um, it'll even be kind of evergreen. So if, if you missed it for some reason and, and you're still interested, you can return back to this uh, show notes at 1000houses.com forward slash Amazon. And, and uh, check out this I, I want to use your exact words. Check out this little portal. Kind of just go through it. Yes. Poke your head in and look yes. around. It does, yes. you know, what, what does the workshop cost? It's free. It's a free workshop. I knew We're, that. I, I just want to make sure everyone. Yeah. Knows well, this it's is the e-commerce business club. I've always been education based. I like. I, I don't like it when people don't know what they're getting involved with. I just. It, it doesn't. You know, and because then they join, they're like, no, when did I actually, when did I sign up for? No, 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 no. I want people to understand what this is about, you know, that what is this Amazon opportunity? How does it work exactly? We'll go through that. We have a schematic to explain it. So it's a, if nothing else, here's another way to look at it. It may not be for you. Who knows? But I'll tell you what, there are a lot of people, we live in strange times, Mitch, just going to say, you're kind of strange. And and people need to have backups, okay? I'm just saying, I watch, the, I am following the news and, you know, I watch these kind of things that are global, local, national, blah, blah, blah. Y'all better buckle up. Y'all better start, yeah. you got to take ownership of your future. I am real serious about that. And I learned that a long time ago. I do not want to be at the whim of anyone else when they so lay off goofy, or, or lay off or they, that's right. it or they cancel it. You know, like what she's saying is, is maybe you better work part time while you have your job to find something that might become your primary source of income in case yes. your job right now goes away or the way that you, whatever you're making a living at, maybe it quits. Um, only you as an individual, can know what you're doing and look out in the world and go, what's the chances that this is going to survive? You know, so um, I'm with you. I, I, multiple streams of income yes. have always been a part of my plan because you never know yeah. which one's going to boom and which one's going to go out the window. Yeah. And so you need more than just one. Yes. It, honestly, I mean, and if anyone saw Kiyosaki from way back, me 20 years ago or so, me? is get a kitchen table business going. Tax write-offs. There's just, I mean, I, I get just stumped with, you have to have a plan B. If you do not have a plan B, I don't know if this is going to be the right, you know, for whoever is watching this. You, you don't know until you get information and you go, oh. If, if I had a plan B though, you know, some people's plan B is, well, I'm going to work extra uh, weekends on DoorDash or whatever. I said, no, get a plan B that actually has the potential, that could have the potential to exceed your job five times. I mean, you know, be careful what you pick. You yes. can you can pick, you know, I've started businesses that I, I ended up, didn't know that I was doing at the time. I put myself like a hamster on a wheel and I had to just keep running to make payroll every Friday. It was horrible. It was horrible. Um, be careful what you pick. And then I've picked businesses that, hey, I was great at it. But, you know, unfortunately, all you can make it, this, there's only 24 hours in a day. And the only way it works is me. And it doesn't work without me. So I can only work 24 hours a day. So I'm capped. Yeah. Might still might be kind of good money. But, damn, if I take a week off, I don't make any money. Exactly. Yes. You know? Heaven forbid okay. I want to take off a quarter, travel the world or anything. I'd be broke by the time. You know, so... I think this is the, that kind of business. So go to 1000houses.com forward slash Amazon. Um, again, pick up your free profit project calculator and get signed up for the free workshop. Poke your head in, take a look around. If it's not for you, go find something else. But you know, you, you're you going to have to to get on a few horses to find the one you want right. to take to the Kentucky Derby. You know what I mean? You don't, it's not, may not be the first one you get on, might not be the 10th one you get on, but find one. Find one sooner than later and get on with it.
All right, anything else we need to cover before maybe we wrap it up? Seize the day, Car <laughs> Carpus Dam. I mean, honestly, you know, I will say what holds a lot of people back are internal thought processes that are self-sabotaging. Self um, thankfully, I got exposed at a very young age. My mom had me selling Christmas bells in the neighborhood when I was like seven or eight years old. I hand-knitted them, and it was, it was an opportunity. I sold them. I was like, this is crazy. I mean, as a little kid, you know, so just um, open your mind. If they're listening to your podcast, they're already open-minded people, but just know that success is out there. I love your analogy about there's a lot of horses to ride. Just pick one and look for that one day that gets you to the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. I mean, you know, just you get it. You got to try a couple of things, you know, um, find out what works for you. Find out where you belong. It took me forever to find out where I belong. I didn't find where I belonged until I was 34 years old and I was busting my butt from oh, even in high school. I was an entrepreneur. I tried. I had the business of the day. I was bartending at night to make sure I had some money. And then I would had the business of the month. And I was I have a stack of business cards this tall that didn't work out. I finally found what I was supposed to do. And yeah. maybe and maybe along the way, I finally grew up, too. So it's kind of the, the, the intersection between those two things, you know, but um, but it's a pleasure talking to you always. And. I love what you do. I know that you care about the people you teach. I know that you're not in it just for the money. Uh, we have to charge sometimes as coaches in, to weed out the people that are going to waste our time, you know, because um, I, I really do it for what Ann does it for is um, at 61 years old, I don't need any more money. What I need is, is to feel relevant, to feel like I made a difference in people's lives. That's really what I need. You can laugh at that all you want to, but call me when you're 61 and wealthy call me and see if you just want to sit around all day long on a back porch you know you'll get very very depressed and a lot of things will go through your head and and uh as humans we have an innate urge to to want to be valuable and and, and want to help people uh help the people that we can and uh, hopefully you get there you know I know Anne's there, so thank you so much for the way that you handle your business and the in, in the way that you handle your students. Uh, you are very sincere, and it means a lot. You know, I appreciate that. I'll just say, you know, and again, how you maybe felt kind of your question, you know, the sincerity, like what you were just sharing that for your age and no, oh, yeah, I want to have significance here. For me, um, and this sometimes gets me choked up. I am about the family and strengthening the family economy. And I'm just gonna say, that's my contribution to society as a citizen. As a citizen, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do as a citizen, run for office, blah, blah, blah. I've been called to be an entrepreneur. I'm a teacher by heart. Both my parents were teachers. I'm an educator. I love building communities of people. My goal is to strengthen the family economy so they can stand strong because there are a lot of assaults going on right now. They just are. So I want that and family always have been, killer. And there always will be. Yeah. So I'm here to reinforce. It's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The first is to have your needs met. And then you go up and you self-actualize at the top. Shore up that family so that if the family can self-actualize. Maybe they're going to start working in charity organizations, whatever it is. Where is that end goal that you want to feel completely fulfilled because you found a business that can get you to a place where you can do be a contribution to society? And that's not necessarily everyone's goal or vision, but I always tell my boys, your job is to find out what your God-given duty is on this planet. And I guarantee you, it's going to be in service to people. Yes. Service to people. A great place to end. Thank you so much for joining us, Anne. You're welcome. Thank you. This is Mitch with 1000 Houses Podcast. Please stay tuned and see the next episode and the one after that. There's only about 540 episodes so far. I should be more tired. I, I should be like 100 years old. I mean, how do you get to 540 episodes? I didn't think that was even possible. Um, you know, somewhere around the corner, there's a guy with 2000 episodes. So, but uh, check it out, 540 episodes. You can also check out my YouTube channel. Um, just go to um, 1000houses.com forward slash YouTube if you're interested in real estate. All right. This is Mitch. We're out of here. Bye now. Hey, this is Mitch Steven. And thank you. And because you're here right now, you're considering going to the free workshop. And I think that's great. Um, Anne's going to recap for us in a minute 
what you're going to learn at that workshop. But I just want to tell you, you're in the right place. Uh, she's going to give a real earnest effort. Now, whether it's for you, I don't know, but give it a chance and go over there. And what are they going to learn at this workshop? Well, we call it the Automated E-Commerce Business Workshop because you're going to learn how you can become a third-party seller on Amazon and how to learn how to sell profitable products that sell quickly and without any worry, fretting over them, being on the front, the first page of Amazon listing. We're only going to be selling products that are already hot. They're already selling. But we want to learn how to automate it. So we're going to talk about how you make this all possible so that you can have the financial freedom that comes with having an Amazon business. But more importantly, is the time freedom from having an Amazon business. We'll have many case studies to share as well. So I'm super excited. Thank you, Mitch, so much for inviting your folks to be here. They will be very well served. We do a very generous Q&A. It's one of my favorite parts of the workshop. So what they need to do is go ahead and click the link below, put in your information, and I'll be seeing you on the workshop and excited to share this information with you. Feel free to bring uh, your spouse, kids, whatever. We have a lot of families doing this together as well. All right, because uh, when you register, you're going to get your free uh, profit project calculator, and that'll be sent to you. And it'll also be evergreen at some time if for any reason you can't make it this time. But please try to make this one here because it's always better when you can ask some questions and, and it's live. So it's always better. All right, Ann, I hope you see a, and, and change a lot of lives. We will. Absolutely.